from the previous uh, content that we had, this is what we had in our in our page. And um, for our visual code, would need to actually know how our visual code works. So it simply gives us the same concept that we had in our Microsoft Word, whereby we would have a folder, which is this one, which contains our diploma, uh, our web pages, our images, etc. And then also, uh, it's the same where in the previous lecture that we had, we had our school document where we had each of our web pages being visible in the web pages. But in this particular instance, we've got it as a PHP whereby if we can view them both, we can see that we've got two sets of folders where the school folder exists in this particular instance. Let me put them side by side so that you can see. This is our school folder, which exists on our web site or on our server. This is our other folder that we worked with yesterday, where it was giving us uh, our HTML file. So the concept still remains the same. We've got folders, but they are located in different locations or in different perspectives. If we come back to our website or our web page, we can also view the same thing. If we come here, we put local host. We then get the first location of our local host. Uh, in this particular instance, we are just getting a reference of a file, uh, column, forward slashes, and the location of where this is stored. With our local host, we're actually getting a local host, and then it's just giving us a dashboard. So what this then means is instead of having this long extension there, we replace that extension with our local host, which this gives us the content of our page. So maybe we can put that as a note to say, um, I'm just going to type it out there and then delete it. Our page is stored somewhere. So our extension will then work as follows. We are saying if it's on a machine, like the one that we're using now, we have an address, right? And then the address points to or directs us to a value. That's for a local machine. For a server, it directs us to a folder. Right. So what does this mean? If we are working with a local host, we then now need to know the subfolder to get to this particular instance. We are saying we've got C, XAMPP, HTDocs, D25, school, and then we've got the file. Right? We can do the same as we've got for our C. Right? Whereby we can then be able to take the same content and use it to view a file. Let me show you as an example to say how we can do this. We've got this as our 
content, are they? So the content to get to this specific file is as follows. It's C, Zam, HT Docs, D25, and Scoop. I just want to show you how we do this um, the long way. So if I right click and then I copy that link, I also have the, the follow. Right? I change that bit. And then say index.php. And uh, I'll need to change the slash so that it looks the same as the one we had previously. Right. Do we understand why I'm doing this? Do we understand why I'm doing that? Right, let's leave this one as it is. Right. We are saying to access this website, we need to have the keyword file, and then we need to have that uh, colon, we need to have those forward slashes, and then we need to have everything that follows this. With that same logic, we can also paste our content and then get that as our answer what have we done we have actually accessed the same file in two different ways so that is what we are saying there on a local machine it directs us to a specific value and the value that we've got when we use the same access to the local machine we just didn't get the content of the page. However, if it's on the local host now, we'll have the same content. But all we need to do on the local host is as follows. We then put local host. We put D25. We put school. And then we click on enter. So same address, different values. This will then give us a value of the, the file itself. This will give us the value of the content of the web page. Questions, please. Okay, so the address that we've got at the top uh, the address that we have at the top is as follows. That's the address. Let's put it. I like my notepad. I think notepad gives us bigger text. That is our address. And then our local host address will be as follows. Let me just copy that as well, so that we see the difference of how these addresses can be different and can also be used. So what are we then saying? We are saying for us to view the contents of the file, we use that value. For us to view the page that is the page, we use that aspect. So maybe I'll ask one question. If you've got your files stored somewhere, and I can use the file method, does it not mean that I get access to your files? Let's say you've got your information stored somewhere. And I use the file method like I've shown you there. And I've said with the file method, it gives us the content of the page. So if I use the file method on your server or on your computer, will I not be able to then get the contents of your file?
You can get it and live. So in other words, we are then saying, when we are actually working with ourselves, we then need to make sure that people don't get access to our files. So the way that someone doesn't get access to our files is when they go through the local host. So they're actually using the Apache from our Zap. That's the idea of us working with a web server. I'm not sure if we are together or if there are any questions. Okay, let us proceed. So now, yesterday we looked at working with our HTML and we want to be able to open our HTML files, continue a little bit, get into some PHP, and then uh, see how that works. So, given that we can be able to access this code or that content, let me increase the size so that it's better visible on your projection. We then say the moment we have this in our website becomes compromised. It's compromised in that someone can then know that there's a database of PHP, and if they look for it, they'll be able to find it. Because um, what it then means is I can simply just copy that database of PHP. I copy it, I paste it where we have got index of PHP. I press enter. I can also view the content of that file. So in other words, now I know that you have a connection to a MySQL database where it's got a username of root, there's no password, the name of the database is that, I've got my connection, whatever it is that I've put, and now I've accessed it. So that's why now we need access to PHP. Whereas if we are just working with our HTML, if I right click, I view my source, all I will then have is that content. So that is why we need to marry our PHP and our HTML so that when a user opens the back end of the file, that is all they will see. And we have made our content secure. So when our content is secure, we then at least know that there's no access to other information. Let us proceed. So we want to get into uh, opening our file in Visual Code. So we go to File, we then go to Open Folder, we then select where our folder is located, which is Diploma. We select the folder, and then uh, it will ask you, do you trust the authors? I click on yes. Yes, trust the authors. And now we've got our content. So what that then means now is we can be able to view each of our pages and see what each page gives us, right? At the same time, we want to actually go through the two files. We've got index, we've got register. Right? Index and register have got a main difference. So we want to have register display our CSS. Right? Index is this one. Register is that one. Index is the one where we have the blue. Register is the one that we have there. So with our code, here's our code for register. Here's our code for index. What do we need to correct between the two pages? 
And in particular, it's line number five for register, and it's line number four for index. It gives us link, the style sheet, and the reference. Our register gives us the link, the style sheet, plus this. What might we need to change so that register gets our style sheet? Maybe I switch between the two, or rather, let's do it this way. I'll copy this, and I'll paste it there. That way you can be able to compare the two. Her line five and line six up. There's a difference. What is the difference? And why are we then getting something different? Yes, if you've got something to say. Right, type a problem. What should our type be? Hmm? CSS. Okay, let's remove this line and let's put CSS. I'm just working with what you are telling. CSS. File save. We go back to register. It has not changed. Yes. Hey, Arif. Arif. I don't but it's not good. As it stands, we don't really need it. We need to correct the link. We need to correct the link. Right. When we were here, I right clicked. I went to view source. We've also got a link for a style sheet. This is our link for our style sheet. Whereby we state the following this link. There's something that is there. What do you see? That is missing here. Saka text to danga singa fani We're supposed to put text slash we say. To come back to our page we Refresh our text is in order. Right. 
So if you remember when we were working with C, we used to have errors. These are some of the errors that we would want to have. So like we said, Monday is a very good day. We are going to have a website that we are going to design in the four hours. We are going to be putting our images, our PHP, our whatever. And the only condition for you to pass is to have everything with it. So we've got videos, we've got lectures, and Monday we are doing our simple website that we are doing for the entire lesson. And everyone must attend. The only reason to not attend is to have a doctor's letter that you were in hospital and you could not leave hospital. But if you can come through, you come, you do your website, and everything must be working. Okay, let us proceed. So the next thing we want to then do is the following. One might then ask, why do we need to keep doing repetition? Why not have something that is individual and that can cover everything that we want to do? Right? Remember when we were working with PHP, we said we could be able to put objects that are then used as one aspect. You remember? When we're saying we're doing PHP, we could have our object being used in one particular context. So what this then means now is if we are working with HTML, HTML limits us in how we do some of these things. So how does it limit us? If we want to correct each of the pages, we need to go to each individual page individually. So if we want to have, let's say, our JavaScript work, it does not have any CSS. It does not have any icon. So how, do, how then do we do it? Our login also does not have any CSS, does not have any login. So we want to then recreate this website using PHP, right? So since this website is more or less similar to what we've done before, we'll work with the contents of this website to create a PHP version of the same website. And it is. So how then do we do that? That's the next stage that we want to get to. I'm hoping most of us have this by now. We'll try and use this as our guiding block for what we want to do. So we want to create this same website that at the moment exists in a desktop folder called Diploma. And we've also got a school folder that is on our HT docs where this one now we can also create it and save it as a new website okay. so to do that we'll start from the base this is the folder that is on the desktop this is the folder that is on our website so for our website we then now need to give it a name so the name we'll give it would be something else where we can create a folder. So we need to create a folder on our HT docs. And on our HT docs, we then call it TUT, which then means we want a tutorial for our website. And it is. So tutorial would be TUT. If we come to our local host we now have school we want to access our tut so our tut we then come there d25 we put tut 
we are still working with the same concept that we have said, whereby it's local host, D25, EUT, click on enter. Enter then gives us the folder that, that contains our EUT and it has nothing at the moment. It then gives us an error that we're using Apache 2.4.53. Uh, we've got open SSL. We've got our PHP version 7.4.29. And then we are using our local server at port 80. That is it. So why is this important? Whenever we're then working with a functional website, we can then be able to access this location. So what it then means, if I'm on the same network as you, you can be able to actually view the contents of a website that is on my computer. So we'll then also need to see how we can access the contents of whatever is on a web uh, server and people can be able to use. So what it then means is I can create the same concept that we've got online, put it on my computer, everyone then has access to my computer and you just upload your content. As long as we are on the same network. So let's proceed. What we now want to do is the following. The other problem we've got with uh, working with each individual site. I can't actually use the same folder or several folders uh, in one go. It is possible, but it might end up confusing you guys. So we can go to File, we then go to Open, Folder, we then go to the location which is C, XAMPP, HDDocs, D25, TUT, we select that fold. So everything else disappears. We now have our TUT fold. We want to go through what we did yesterday. The only difference that we are doing now is we want to replace what we did with the PHP file. So because this is located here, on our web server. We need to also save our files there. The first element we need to put is a new file. And we call it index.php. Um, it was file, new text file, and then we've got uh, an empty file. We click on file, we then save. We want to save it as index.php. Okay, just select the save as type as PHP. That's one of the differences we've got in our visual code and notepad. You can just select the type that we want, we click on save, and it automatically gives you a PHP, a PHP file. It then also tells you cannot validate and uh, since an instance, a PHP installation cannot be found, we need to open settings and what have you. This is only if you want to configure your visual code to have PHP script uh, analysis or use. Okay, so at the same time now, we can also be able to open a file on our folder. So our folder is diploma and our file is index, right? So we're doing this so that we can be able to recreate the same concept that we have. 
So this file is on our desktop, which is Diploma. The next file is in our tutorial, which is on the web server. So how do we then get it done? We simply create our HTML. We've also got our content that we've had. I want us to re recreate everything and we'll copy what we need when we need it. Like that. So we've got our content as it's there. What was the title? The title was example website. So we use example website as it is. Click on copy. We come to our page. We then save it as example website. We click on save. And then we are done. We are done. Let's just go back to the page and refresh. And then now we've got example website. Okay. Everything is in order. Perfect. So now we want to include the PHP aspect. We want to include the PHP aspect. Remember what we said our PHP does. We use scripting and it. We said we work with scripting, and that is what we would be using for whatever element we want to work. So the next stage I want you to do, I'm sure you're following with me step by step, and we've got this. We want to create separate files. We need two separate files. Or rather, let's make them three files. We also need to create a folder for a third file. We also need to put our image. Right? So now what we're doing is we're now mapping how we want our website to be structured. The first thing that we do is we go to our folder, which is the one which we call tutorial which is TUT, and unfortunately I can't zoom in for that, but let's create some of the elements that we want. The first element we want is we want to create a folder, and then the folder we want to call it CSS. The next thing we want to do is we want to come to our diploma folder. We want to copy our survey code. We click on uh, copy. We come there and we paste. That's what we want to have. We also need to have uh, on our notepad, let's just copy everything that we've got there. We cut, we come to our notepad, we paste. There's a reason why we are doing that. So, the next thing that we want to do is as follows. We have saved our item. We've created a CSS folder. We've put our file icon. We've got our index.php. We want to create two separate files and these files would be as follows we go to file we go to new um sorry i selected open i want to select 
new text file. We go to file again, we go to new text file. The first element we want to put, we want to put for the top section of the page. The next element we want to put is for the bottom section of the page. So, remember we said we want to work with objects. So, we want to name our objects top and bottom so that we can be able to call those uh, sections. We then go to file, we go to save as, we save this as top, the save as type is PHP, we click on save, we go to the next one, we go to file, we go to save as, we save this as bottom, dot PHP. We can still form. I just created new file. It's new files, then I just named it top and bottom. So they are PHP files. We want to see how we can design our page. Because all we are saying is we want to be able to create a web page that we can be able to use and change just one page, change the entire page. Okay. So, we've got our index.php, we've got our top.php, we've got our bottom.php, we've also got our favicon. So what we want to put in our index.php is the following. We want to now put PHP script. And how does our PHP script work? We simply said we put two question marks, we put our PHP, and then that's the first line, copy, paste, and then we put our include control copy, control paste. So we want to include. First include, we want top.php. Next include, we want bottom dot php. Like that. Are we still together? So with our top and our bottom the PHP, we then want to put our funnel. We've got our bottom and our bottom. Let's get to the next part. The next part is simple. We know how we did our HTML. Now we're putting it into PHP. So our PHP will then come in as follows. Remember, we copied and pasted some stuff at the edge or on another page. For our top, we want to put this content, copy, and then in our top, we put the follow, and then we save. So for our top, we want to put HTML, we want to put head, we want the title, 
We want the closing head head tag. We want the closing. Uh, we want the opening body tag. That is what we want to put in our top part. If we then come to our bottom part, we then want to just put the closing tags of the body and the closing tag of the HTML. So the top contains that, the bottom contains that, and then we are good to go. And then when we come to our index.php, we just have the two pages. We click on save, and then everything has been saved. Yes. The river index. The river index. So the index table is what includes top.php, includes bottom.php. And then we've got top, we've got But what we would want to say is when we have done this, we can come back to our page. If we just refresh, the user should not see a difference. The user, the user should not see a difference. So what does this then mean? It means As we have created our page this way, we can now be able to have another page, if we want, where we've got information that we want to put. But that's getting ahead of ourselves. Let's continue with our course. So now we want it to look like the example that we have, which is this one. So for it to look like this example, we need to then include the following. We come back to our HTML, and then we want to include this link, All right? Whereby we want a style sheet, our reference, and our type. So we come to that particular point. We put a link. And then we say our rel equals our h ref equals our type equals should have been text dot css. No, it was text slash css. And this was styles. I need it. And then we also had uh, for our register, let's just see what our register had. Our register had this as well, which was a link to our favicon, which is this one. So that is where we are now, whereby we've got our links, where the first link 
it's our icon, and then it's referencing the icon that we already have. The type is image dash x dash icon. The next link is our style sheet, where it's giving us a reference. We've got text slash CSS. Because we don't have the style sheet yet. We will need to create the style sheet. So if we save our top as it stands, we can refresh our example. And then we'll then have our icon showing and we've got example website. So as, as we have created our page, We have managed to separate our HTML document into three parts. The first part is the index.php. The second part is our top.php. The third part is our bottom.php. So what this effectively means now is we have the general skeleton of our page. We can also create another page where it will just be containing information that we want to see in between the top and the bottom part. So in other words, we can design the top and the bottom part and then the middle part. We can also add another part because that's what our scripting would then be doing. So instead of us actually having different aspects, we can now then be able to just pick a page and see what happens on a particular page. Okay, let us proceed. So the next aspect we want to do is, like someone had asked, we want, yes. Yes. Because if you realize when we had our HTML, which is this one, each individual page needed to have its own code. So let's say we are doing a project that is over 100 pages. We need to go to each of those pages and change content. But now if we've got something that fits, we can just change one file and change all the content on that one file. And it becomes easier than creating individual so splitting our content this way helps to manage how uh, our website will be working. If there are no more questions, let's proceed. Was that a question? Right, so let's proceed. The next element that we want to work with is creating our CSS. And our CSS, we had actually called it page.css. So we go to file, new text file, and then we want to put that as our first set of code. We click on enter. We go to file, we then go to save as. We then want to go to our location. Please make sure you save it in the right location. And then in our location, we want to put the CSS. And then we want to call it page. In fact, let's actually give it a different name so that we know the difference between the two sites. So we call it style, and then we save it as CSS file, we click on save. So that then becomes our CSS file. So for our CSS file, we said we want to put content. Yes. 
Yes. Yes. It was a new file, so it's file, new text file. When you create that new text file, uh, in this file, let's say this is the file that I've created, I go to file, save as, and then style.css, then I click on save. If it exists, just click on yes, and then now we have our file. Let's move on. So we've got our style.css. We want to then put some content for our CSS. So let's just put a padding. And we want to put a padding at 20 px. And then we want to put a color to be brown. So that's what we're just doing for this CSS, which is stuff. So we have put our code, which is a an O, which means it's for the entire page. We open our brackets, we put a padding of 20, we put a color of brown. And then our CSS is done. From there, from there we then want to go back to our top PHP. From there, we want to go to our top.php. So our top.php, we do it as follows. We go to top, and then we go to line number five whereby we want to then select where this exists. So it's CSS dash style dot CSS. We save that content. We've also got our style dot CSS. To also view our changes, let's put some text and we say, Welcome. So we go to our link, uh, and then we just go to the href, and we say CSS dash style dot CSS. Uh, after our body, we just type out welcome, so that we see what this does. We save this file. We save our style.css. We come back to our web page. We refresh. And then we have the follow. And we'll proceed. So, this is what we have, but it's not quite what we want to see. We want to see the same content that we had in our HTML uh, context, which was this one, whereby we've got the following text, right? We want HTML, CSS, JavaScript, login, and register. That's what we want next. So we come back to our top. We change the welcome because it was just a, an example. And we put follow. So this becomes HTML. The next one becomes The next link,
right? The next value becomes CSS. The next value becomes JS. The next value becomes login. The next value becomes register. And we put our href for each of the elements. So for the purposes of the example, this can work as it is, whereby we've got our link, which is our HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and login. I can save my top. I come back to my example. I refresh, and that is what our content looks like. With HTML, CSS, JavaScript. Login and register. So that is what we have on our. So please make sure for you to be able to follow along. You've got your link in the right order. You've got your style sheet in the right order. You've also got your favicon in the right order. So this link gives you your favicon, which is your icon. This link gives you your style sheet. These links give you your page. So you've got your pages, you've got your links, and everything is in order. Yes. Mm -hmm. Let's proceed. The next thing we want to do is the following. After these links, we want to use another element we've used before, which is our horizontal rule. And then we want to put headings. And then the headings uh, give us the title of the page. Like that. We then save it. We refresh. And then we see the fall. So we've got our home. And we've got that. Right, so the reason why we see our output this way, for example, we've got this line there. It's because of the padding that we have put on the entire page. So to fix that, we can come to our style.css. We change the padding to just padding left. Click on save. We refresh our page. Okay. 
Okay, I'm not sure why it's not refreshing in time. We have saved it. But uh, it's an issue of the pad. And then that way we've got our home and our home. Or rather our home was supposed to be HTML. So we might need to actually rename that to HTML. So that we see the location that we are currently at. Like that, so we are at the same home. So, we have seen how we design our page this way. If we right click, and we go to view page source. All we we'll then now see is our HTML. Although when we designed our page, we did not design it this way. We designed it having three separate pages. So the three separate pages will then give us the HTML that we want to work with. So in other words, we're then saying because of the scripting, all we are doing with our scripting is we are putting our content on different pages and then calling all that content into one page. That is how we are then creating our page. Let us proceed. Let us proceed. So the next thing that we now need to do is as follows. If you remember yesterday, we were working with links. And we said our links need to be linked to individual pages. What if we want to link to anywhere within the page? How can we do that? That's the next page we want to get to. So let's re do our code. And we're just changing a few elements. So at the end of our links, we want to put follow. We want to put a line break, and then we want to put a div tag. And then our div tag, we want to put this div tag to have an ID of H. Um, let's put it as a B A. Uh, let's put it as bow dash one, and then in our bow dash one, we want to put a heading, which will be able to say. HTML. Like that. So this then means we want to be able to link to this particular point. We also want to create the same for all the other values. So we want to create a div tag and then link to this particular div tag. So how then do we do that? We simply say, restart. So we've got our div, and we've put our div ID as value 
one, and then we also put content in in our HTML page. We can come to our index so that we just copy some. We copy that text, we come to our top, we paste our text, and then we are good to go. So we want in our href, we want it to link to our var dash one, and then we save our content. So why are we doing it that way? We are putting our hash and then the name of the ID to direct our link to a specific position on our page. So if I save this content, I go to my page, I refresh, I now find the following, I click on my link and then it takes me to that particular section because we want a section that is within the page but this only makes sense if we've got everything spaced out and we've got more content at each level let's try and do uh, some copy paste so that maybe we can see a better example of how this works. So let's have our heading, and then this becomes H1, H1, HTML, we click on save. How can we include our pages like we did with HTML, given what we now know? Because our index.php is just containing this. What if we want to include a, the other elements? Like, for example, your CSS, your HTML content, your JavaScript, your register. How can we do that? How can we do that? The next one is login. PHP. The next one is register dot php we save our information and then now we need to create the file so to create the files now would now need to do the following we can remove this information paste it somewhere And then come back to our document. And then do the follow. We want to say at each particular instance. We want to say at each particular instance. We then specify our value. And here is where it will get interesting. We've got our header part, we've got our bottom part, but we now need to have the bottom part. So what this really means is the bottom part we need to create something that will remain constant in all the pages. Are we together? If we are to have content for the HTML page, 
the devil is the internal case should start from something or should have something. So our internal case should be something that we believe. Our inner case could also be something different. Let's create it and hopefully we can see what I'm explaining. We go to file, we go to new text file. We then want to save this as file, save as html.php. And in our HTML.php, we want to have this content. So we've got our HTML.php. Right. What I simply did was I created a file and called it HTML.php, and then we have that. Are we together? So my question was. We've created html.php. We've got index.php. If we include html.php and index.php, how do we make the pages uniform? Index.php has the following. Uh, HTML.php has the following. Maybe for you to see why, what I'm asking, let's go to our page. We go to our website. We refresh. We select HTML.php. It gives us that. Our main page, it gives us that. So the biggest question now is how do we make html.php match with index.php? You know then? Hmm. No one will suggest that one. I'll see where it comes from. Praise. Brandon. Think I just said it's made. How can we make them match? Let's do the follow. To get HTML.php running, let's put our include bar. So we want to include the follow. We copy zoom index.php. We come and we paste. We also just want to rearrange this content and put it that way. So that we have the text 
on the bottom included in our index.php, we click on save. If we refresh, we'll then be able to have the follow. So in other words, our top and our bottom help keep consistency in our page. So what we simply did was we came to our HTML.php, we put a top, the bottom, we then put the content in between the HTML.php and our program runs. We've gone through quite a lot. Let's redo what we have just done with the next few pages. Yes, can mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We are coming to the HTML. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We are coming to the HTML. We are coming the top, which you already have in index, dot PHP. And then from html.php, HTML we've already called the top, which exists in the index.php. So all we are then putting is the content in between uh, the top and the bottom. If you remember when we started, I asked you a question to say, we also now need to include html.php. Where will it fit in? So in other words, we can also say, instead of doing it this way, we can remove top and bottom and then call html.php in index.php. Because all we are simply saying is, whatever is changing is what's between top and bottom. I don't know if I have not further confused you. We are simply saying HTML.php should be its own page. Index.php should be its own page. So in other words, we can just call HTML.php in our index.php. So, so far, we're just doing it as simple as is possible. But we'll then get into variables and how we can then be able to call individual pages using a function. Whereby we are saying in top.php, we can create a function that then checks whether the HTML link has been clicked, or whether the CSS link has been clicked, or whether the JS link has been clicked, and then it will take us say, to HTML.css. So that is the next stage after what we are doing now. So let us proceed. Let us proceed. We want to just re redo what we have just done on a different page, and then we round up this lesson. So like we are saying, let's go to file. Let's go to new text file. We then go to file and then we go to save as. And then we want to have CSS. And we want this to be PHP. We click on save. And then now 
we want to redo what we have just done. But we want to redo it as we are trying so that it acts as revision. So the first bit, we want to put our PHP tag, whereby we put PHP, and then we say include Then we want to have top.php. We also want to include bottom.php. Then our content comes there, where we have a div tag. And then with our div tag, we want to be able to put a heading, which would be h1. And then we want to have CSS. We also want to have our paragraph tag. And then this then has about CSS, like that. So, what does this then mean? We have created another page. But the advantage that we've got to this page is our top remains the same, our bottom remains the same, and then what just changes is what's in CSS.php. If we come back to our page, we select CSS, we then have about CSS. JavaScript doesn't exist, login doesn't exist, register doesn't exist. So if we click on them, it gives us an error. So in other words, we then need to create individual files for each of those pages. And that is how we can design our page in PHP.